I didn't quite know, this is clip eight, um, I didn't quite know what to call this um, style of question. Ignore the extended right for a minute, we're coming on to that. So I kind of came up with the idea that I thought it was pure evil. There will be somewhere on this exam paper a question that you actually just stop and think, what on earth, what am I supposed to do? This is incredibly difficult. On last year's exam paper, um, the students came out and they felt it was this one. And we kind of knew in our heart of hearts it would be something to do on atmospheric circulation, which is our least favourite bit of geography. Anyway, this was the pure evil question. Explain one way in which global atmospheric circulation determines the location of high rainfall, low pressure areas. Three marks. You may use a diagram to help you, but there's also spaces to write. Now, where do you actually start with this one? Um, a lot of people got incredibly stuck. Some people drew a diagram, some people didn't, some people wrote, some people did both. Some people probably put too much information in. Just bear in mind, it is only worth three marks. However bad or ambiguously worded or difficult this question is, it's only worth three marks. Focus on what you do know in the question, okay? Global atmospheric circulation. Now, surely at that point, you're remembering something about a globe and something about the equator and the poles and something about it's hot here, it's cold here because that's what global atmospheric circulation is. The movement of heat away from the equator to the North and South Pole via these circulation cells that stops the Earth from, from actually becoming uninhabitable um, North and South. Okay? Think about what you do know in the question. Location of high rainfall, low pressure. High rainfall. The highest rainfall is found along the equator. Think tropical rainforest. Okay? When you've picked the question, it's really asking you, isn't it, to try and explain why the highest rainfall bits are located there. How is global atmospheric circulation helping explain why the highest rainfall bits are located there? Okay? And pick the question, see what you do know before you start thinking about answering it. Would I do a diagram? Would I, I'd probably draw a diagram, to be honest. I think the danger is, if you do both, you're just repeating yourself and wasting time. A clearly labelled diagram, which is what I'm going to attempt to draw now, or start to draw now, is actually going to explain what you need to. Now, by clearly labelled, you know, it, it's going to have to have things that point out what things are. And you can see on mine, I've just labelled the equator, I've just labelled the globe. What I could then do is add numbers and sequences to my diagram that help explain what's going on. So in point number one, I might be talking about... Um, Solar radiation hitting the equator, causing the air above the equator to heat up and rise. This creates low pressure. As the air rises, it, it cools, it condenses, it triggers convectional rainfall, making this part of the world incredibly hot and incredibly wet. The warm air then continues to, to fall. As it falls back down, it heats up. So what I've basically described there is the Hadley circulation cell. Okay, but by numbering this diagram and perhaps adding my, if I'd perhaps drawn it a bit more over here, it might have been an idea, but then adding in this is what's happening here, that's what's happening there, that's what's happening there, I am going to pick up three. I'll pick up one on its own for a, a well drawn and labelled diagram. I can then pick up the further two marks by my diagram actually working for me and explaining why along this band here. Zero latitude, the equator, it's hot and it's wet, okay? I don't then think I need to repeat myself by writing about it here. Now, just to recap, if you're faced with something that is just absolutely blooming awful, okay? Don't leave it blank. You've got to try and get something out of this. 
go back to the question, find the words that you do know, or find something that you do sort of trigger in your head, oh yeah, I vaguely remember something about that. If in doubt, start drawing, start trying to do a diagram. You may not get three, okay? But you might actually pick one or two marks up from that question, rather than looking at it and just going, no, can't do it, don't know what it's on about, and ignoring it and hoping it's going to go away. Okay, thank you.